सूत्र सेवेंटी एट अहिंसा सत्य शौच दयास्तिक यादि चारित्रयाणी परिपाल नियानी The devotee should cultivate virtues such as non-violence, truthfulness, cleanliness, compassion, faith in the existence of the Lord, and so forth. The 76th aphorism advised the aspirant to perform only those actions which increase the spirit of devotion. To nurture the growth of a devotee, this aphorism discerns five special codes of conduct. Often in the name of devotion, People say that the primary object is to cultivate devotion and not the good qualities that are necessary on the devotional path. If the devotee lacks the more refined qualities such as non-violence, truthfulness, cleanliness, compassion, faith in the existence of the Lord and so forth, he may excuse it by saying that at least he is a devotee and this is the most important thing. An individual may believe that as a devotee he can commit any amount of sin because he is protected. This statement is not correct. These divine qualities are part and parcel of devotees. When an aspirant practices devotion, the celestial qualities imbue him like the rays of divinity, removing negative tendencies, just as the bright rays of the sun remove darkness. If worldly thoughts and bad qualities are growing in the aspirant, he only regresses in his progress, and he is gradually enveloped in darkness like the earth at the setting of the sun. The great souls are living examples of these noble qualities. Here, Sage Narad elaborates on those divine qualities. 1. Nonviolence. Nonviolence means non injury to anyone by one's actions thoughts or deeds. Each person is part and parcel of the Lord and he resides in everyone. Therefore, harming another is the same as harming the Lord. And for this reason, a sincere devotee cannot possibly think of hurting anyone. People who are selfish or jealous by nature usually hurt others by their thoughts, words or actions. Sometimes, even devotees are critical of other devotees or those who belong to different spiritual schools as well as those who do not believe in the Lord. This is a very counterproductive attitude for a devotee to adopt because if he starts to dislike others and becomes envious of anyone, he may not be able to meditate on his Lord. Instead, he is likely to meditate on the negativity of his feelings towards others. Therefore, he should refrain from harming anyone by his thoughts, words or deeds. 2. Truthfulness One can have knowledge and understanding of a subject, but this does not imply that the subject matter is correct. A man who pursues spiritual life should be truthful to the core, and his actions, words and thoughts should reflect his values. One should not waste a moment on any untruthful matter, and one should never act in a dishonest manner. A devotee should exemplify the truth by his actions, speech and thought, and this practice becomes a blissful way of life for him, as well as those he inspires. 3. Cleanliness Cleanliness does not mean outer hygiene only. Here, one should focus on internal cleanliness, for example, maintenance of one's community home and body, as well as purification of one's mind and thoughts. When a devotee begins his spiritual life, the goal is to purify his heart so that only the Lord can reside there, and this is not possible if it is impure. Hence, an aspirant should not harbour hypocrisy, hostility, pride, jealousy, grief, sinful thoughts, worldly thoughts worldly attachments, and so forth. 4. Compassion Compassion is a feeling of restlessness at the sight of human misery. This sentiment should always be cultivated for each and every creature throughout one's existence, and the action that may cause suffering to others should not be practiced. 
An example of such compassion is found in the Chaitanya Charitamrit 7.136-137. There once was a man named Vasudev. He was a jewel of a man, but still he suffered from leprosy. His body was covered with wounds, and in those wounds, parasites lived. Wherever a worm fell out of his body, the compassionate Vasudev lovingly picked it up and placed it back. 5. Faith in the existence of the Lord Without faith, one cannot even walk. When a person walks, he has faith that the ground will support his weight, and he has assurance that his legs will have the energy to carry him. Faith is the very essence of life, and this world is resting on faith. People have faith in each other, and even if a devotee loses hope in the world, he can focus his faith on the Lord. Faith in the existence of the Lord is the most important belief one needs to have in one's devotional practice. Sometimes, devotees run in many different directions, searching for answers, trying to stabilize themselves in their practice, which can divert them from cultivating one-pointedness in their devotion. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.22, the Lord states that He supplies all that a sincere devotee needs in his devotional life. Therefore, those who have this assurance have no reason to divert themselves. Lack of conviction in the Lord's existence leads to instability in the aspirant's devotion. Therefore, he is not able to rely on him, and he doubts in the capability of his powers. The Vishnu Puran gives a perfect example of an elevated devotee who demonstrates such courage and sincerity on the path of devotion. Prahlad became a devotee of the Lord, but his father, a demon named Hiranakashipu, was against his son's practice. On the command of Prahlad's father, thousands of demons marched furiously with their weapons to kill him. Prahlad knew his conviction would prevent the weapons from causing any harm to him because he believed that his Lord resided in these weapons and in the demons and in everything created by him. Astonishingly, the weapons had no effect on Prahlad even though they struck him very hard. Hiranakashipu tried many techniques to kill Prahlad. He was thrown into a fire but he did not burn. Prahlad's father sent the female destructive goddess, Kritya, to kill him. Yet Prahlad survived. Hiranakashipu asked his son if his lord existed in a pillar near them. Prahlad declared, Yes, my lord is present everywhere. He is even present in this pillar. Hiranakashipu took out his sword to strike the pillar, to defend the honour of his dear devotee the Lord manifested himself from the pillar. Therefore, this aphorism encourages devotees to constantly maintain the highest level of faith and to cultivate virtues that will continue to develop their conviction in the Lord's existence.